The C4X is the best of a hatchback with the modernity of an SUV and the timelessness of a saloon, according to Citroen. Or you could simply see it as the sedan version of the brand's quirky C4 hatch. Either way, it's an ambitiously styled EV or combustion powered four door family saloon that's compact yet spacious with a simply enormous boot. X seems to mean different things to different brands. Citroen doesn't see the letter as designating an SUV. Instead, for them, it references what the brand calls the crossroads of different universes, a melding together of different genres, the sort of thing we've already seen in the company's large C5X. With the C4X, the styling brief was rather less ambitious, but it still hopes to blend hatchback, crossover and sedan genres together into one appealing compact shape that at first glance could fall into any one of those three categories. We've seen something similar, but rather more dramatic, with French cousin brand Peugeot's 408. But the C4X is a more straightforward design that sits on a different, simpler CMP platform and is offered with a wider variety of powertrains, available in petrol, diesel or full electric forms. As you might expect, everything is based on the C4 hatch, but from the B-pillar back, things are a great deal more spacious and interesting. Let's take a closer look. The C4X does of course drive just like the C4 hatch and as with that car, the brand hopes that the way this car handles and particularly the way that it rides is what will sell it to you. If you've never really understood why so much of the design of compact family cars is devoted to high speed handling engineering that few owners particularly want and most can never properly use, and we'd understand your point of view, then you'll get what Citroen's trying to do with this C4X at once. Whether you choose this car in pure tech petrol form, in its blue HDI diesel guise, or in the E C4X full electric form we're trying here, this is an uber laid back approach to what a C segment saloon should be. It's been described as being more supple than your Pilates teacher with a seat inside comfier than your favourite armchair and cruising refinement that's quieter than a weekend without the kids. If ever a compact family car set out to lower rather than raise the heartbeat, this is it. Primarily, all of this comes courtesy of what Citroen calls its advanced comfort programme, the pillars behind which are more thickly padded advanced comfort seats and rather more significantly, the brand's heavily patented progressive hydraulic cushion suspension. The name of this damping setup might suggest the kind of air springing the brand is historically famous for. The current trend might suggest it to be driver adaptive. Neither solution though fits with the approach Citroen must take at this price point. The company lost money building too much damping complexity into its affordable cars in the 60s and 70s and it's not about to make the same mistake again. So what we've got instead is an ordinary everyday spring and damper setup that's been reimagined in a rather clever way. In ordinary cars, such a system usually works with rubber bump stops that the suspension coil crashes against over bumps at the top and bottom of wheel travel. The progressive hydraulic cushion setup replaces these stops with hydraulic dampers, and these cushion those impacts over things like speed humps and tarmac tears and allow the fitment of softer springs and dampers, producing the exemplary ride quality that Citroen claims this car can deliver. It seems to work too. We wouldn't join the French brand in describing it as magic carpet-like. You need proper air suspension for that. But overall, this is probably the best conventional springing setup we've tried, easing the car over poor surfaces and floating you from crest to crest in a way that makes the ride of some class competitors feel rather crude. And as advertised, the thick quilted advanced comfort front seats further embellish the feeling of Gallic luxury.
If Citroen could affordably combine all this with the active scan suspension technology that's fitted to this car's close Stellantis Group cousin, the DS4, a setup that predicts and prepares for bumps before you reach them, you'd think that something really special might be possible. For the time being though, we're left with a damping solution that works well but is affected more than you'd hope by things like deeper potholes and more extreme speed humps, not helped by the largish standard fit 18 inch wheel rims. Perhaps though, that's the price you pay for getting a big improvement in ride comfort without the corresponding payback of a family saloon that handles like a waterbed through the corners. Enough on that, you're going to want to know about engines, assuming you want an engine, of course, even though, unlike its close Stellantis Group cousins, the Peugeot 308 and the Vauxhall Astra, this Citroen is based around the conglomerate's smaller CMP Super Mini platform. It still has access to much the same EV technology that you'd find in an E308 or an Astra Electric, which we'll brief you on in a moment. If the price for an EC4X is a bit of a stretch for you though, then you'll probably end up behind the wheel of a PureTech petrol engine version. This familiar 1.2 litre three cylinder unit comes in two main flavours. There's a base 100 horsepower unit offered only with a six speed manual gearbox or a 130 horsepower version, which is available in both manual or auto forms. In all its forms, this is a great little engine, which is just as well as without it, Citroen, along with Peugeot, Vauxhall and DS, would hardly sell any cars at all. It responds to prods of your right foot with a cheerful warble and in 130 horsepower manual form, makes 62 miles an hour from rest in 8.9 seconds if you're quick with the stick shift, which isn't easy. One writer described its shift action as akin to wiggling a plunger in a recalcitrant sink. We wouldn't go quite that far, but we'd agree that this torque converter EAT8 Auto is much better suited to the kind of car this is, with smooth changes and a preference for racing up the ratios in a bid to save fuel. With this transmission fitted, the 62 mile an hour sprint takes 9.4 seconds. And for the few that'll want a diesel in this car, Citroen supplies its usual 130 horsepower 1.5 litre blue HDI unit, though only with the auto gearbox. On paper, the sprint performance of that black pump fueled power plant is similar, rest to 62 in 9.5 seconds, but with 30% more torque on tap. A blue HDI C4X will feel livelier, particularly if you're driving fully laden. As with the two petrol models, topped out just shy of 130 miles an hour. If you're a prospective customer for the all-electric EC4X version of this car, you'd be no more likely to choose a diesel than you would be to fill your recycling bin with toxic waste. At the time of filming in spring 2023, there were two BEV versions of this model, the most affordable of the pair featuring the older Stellantis Group EV powertrain, consisting of a 134 horsepower electric motor powered by a 50 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery capable of a claimed 219 mile range figure, which is the variant we're trying today. With this, 62 miles an hour from rest takes 9.5 seconds on the way to a modest 93 mile an hour top speed. You'd prefer, though, if possible, to stretch to the newer package, which pairs a slightly larger 54 kilowatt hour battery with a faster 156 horsepower motor to offer a driving range WLTP rated at up to 260 miles. Either way, on paper, this is the kind of powertrain setup that in other small electric vehicles spears you away from rest like a scolded cat. As it turns out though, the laid back Citroen demeanor prevails here. Thanks to throttle travel that's intentionally damped down a bit, so you don't pointlessly use an important glug of battery charge wearing away the tread from your front tires every time you set off from rest. There's no one-pedal driving option for the EC4X, like the sort of thing you get in a Nissan Leaf, but there is an extra B mode, which gives greater lift-off deceleration, so boosting the battery's energy harvesting efforts so that you can get somewhere close to the claimed range figures. 
Refinement, of course, is phantom-like, as in any EV, though it's also pretty good in this considerably cheaper PureTech petrol model, which doesn't have to lug around the extra 300 kilos of curb weight inflicted upon the EC4. In the electric variants, you'll feel that through the corners and over sharp bumps. Steering feedback from this EC4 is slightly worse too, though to be honest you don't feel much through the helm of a combustion powered C4 either. The response being somewhat over assisted and springy, which is all very Citroen and explains why most enthusiast magazines tend to disparage this French contender. But we don't. Provided you want the kind of car this is trying to be, you might very well conclude that nothing else in this segment would suit your needs better. It demands little from you, eases over suburbia's terrible tarmac, and sets your forward viewpoint a little higher thanks to its crossovery hatch-derived body shape. There's even a limited amount of autonomous drive tech if you stretch to a top variant equipped with Citroen's Highway Drive Assist system which combines a stop-and-go version of adaptive cruise control with active lane departure warning to take over throttle, steering and braking duties at a cruise or in heavy traffic. All you have to do is keep your hands on the capacitive wheel rim. That setup suits this C4X perfectly. Whether your driving style will is another question entirely. The EAT Auto Gearbox, almost every customer of this Citroen will want, has been given a sport mode to add to its usual normal and eco settings. Why we're not quite sure? Because a typical C4X owner will hardly ever want to use it. They will prefer to enjoy each journey rather than stress away a few extra seconds of it, which, when you think about it, is rather sensible. This Citroen, charismatic and individual as it is, could be described that way too. True to its name, the C4X is what Citroen describes as a cross design, an integration of a fastback saloon body onto the raised hatchback come crossover design of the C4 hatch. Everything at the front is the same as that hatch showroom stablemate, which means that there's plenty of signature Citroen design, much of it borrowed from the brands C Experience, Ami One and 1919 concept cars, particularly in the nose section where the bonnet is high and horizontal and the V-shaped lighting design is evolved from the company's previous double stage headlight signature. It features these chrome strips which flow out of the central chevron badge to frame the two forms of LED illumination here, the daytime running lights at the top and the three module headlamps at the bottom. The two air intakes use a macro chevron pattern, the lower opening underscored by a matte black lower skirt and framed by fog lamp cutouts that, as with other Citroens, can feature colour personalised surrounds, here in anodised blue. Where things change with this C4X saloon body shape is from the B-pillar back, where a different roof line takes over and there's an extra 240 millimetres of length. Like all C4 variants, this one features the smart 18-inch diamond-cut cross-light alloy wheels and the matte black finished wheel arches surrounding them aren't for arduous tracks, but to prevent supermarket car park dings. From here, you can better appreciate the sleek aerodynamic shape of this saloon variant, rated at 0.29 CD. At the rear, the sedan styling smart, with a small ducktail-like spoiler and distinctive LED tail lights designed to look like arrows pointed towards the centre of the boot lid. Red reflectors are combined with reversing lights lower down. Inside, unsurprisingly, the front of cabin experience is exactly the same as in an ordinary C4 hatch. Citroen describes this interior differently as being comfortable and cosy. The comfortable bit is taken care of by these thicker advanced comfort seats and we'll brief you on those in a moment. 
The cosy claim isn't as easy to endorse. Citroen's chosen not to offer UK customers the brighter blue or red trimming packages that on continental cars lift the cabin ambience. So right-hand drive customers are stuck with a rather doer finish, usually grey, the urban grey ambience package fitted here, or black, the hype black ambience finish, you get as an option above base spec. Which is a pity because the design here would benefit from a jauntier vibe. Through the oddly shaped three-spoke wheel, you view a paired back version of the quite innovative digital instrument panel used in the brand C5 Aircross SUV with a five and a half inch backlit TFT screen whose readouts you flip through here by jabbing the left indicator stalk. The lower part of the center console stretches broadly away in front of you into a deep, smartly backlit area at the base of the center stack. And Citroen's obsession with glossy piano black trimming continues here, that finish decorating not only this console, but also the air vents. There's also satin chrome touches, a soft touch dashboard top, this strange but smartly fashioned galoche silver auto gear shift toggle switch, and these smart little angled fabric strips on the door cards, which are blue on this EC4X variant. But none of it's quite enough to distract your attention from the hard-working plastic surrounding the glove box and the chrome-finished rotary climate controls. Still, at least you get separate climate controls, though they're also accessible via an infotainment screen sub-menu. That screen here is the brand's lately improved ultra-thin 10-inch borderless touchscreen display, positioned high on the center stack, which above base trim is upgraded to My Citroen Drive Plus status, which means you get voice activation and Citroen Connect Nav navigation with TomTom Tom Live traffic services. As usual with this Stellantis Group source screen, much of the screen space is taken up by permanently displaying temperate bars on either side. There's what's called an application draw for apps. You can choose to have the time displaying digitally or as an analog clock. And on this EC4X variant, there's an energy section that shows an energy monitor, consumption statistics and charging times. Beyond the screen tech, some curious choices on spec have been made here. There's no multicolor ambient lighting option and you have to stretch right up to the very priciest model for this wireless smartphone charging mat, which is the sort of thing most people want these days. But nearly every model in the range is embellished with a head-up display and with this rather unusual inclusion, the Citroen SmartPad support package. This must have been expensive to engineer, giving you a novel slide-out tablet mount in front of the front passenger plus a lower drawer standard on all models in which to keep your device. No other car on the market offers anything quite like this. Or anything quite like these advanced comfort front seats that we mentioned earlier. They feature particularly broad bases, foam that's 15 millimeters thicker than usual for extra support, plus extra quilted padding to create an inviting visual signature that doesn't disappoint once you squish yourself into place. There's standard lumbar support too, and the headrests look a bit of an afterthought, and there's not much side support, but otherwise these pews brilliantly replicate the kind of feeling of cosseting Gallic luxury that affordable Citroens of the 60s and 70s used to offer. Colour coordinated strips across the seat base edge and the shoulder line add a smart finishing touch. In comparison, the front chairs you get in Rivals are dull and unyielding. Here, you'll really notice a difference. Not everything's great, of course. All that piano black trimming quickly attracts dust and hair, so you'll constantly be wiping it. And the steering wheel looks like it belongs in a cheaper kind of car. But these things apart, this is a pleasant piece of cabin design. You wouldn't necessarily mistake this for a Volkswagen Group product, but everything seems pretty well screwed together, and there's little to fault about the ergonomics, unless you object to the slightly restricted view rearwards, an issue the brand has compensated for not only with the standard fitment of rear parking sensors, but also with the installation of a rear parking camera on virtually every model. There's a reasonable amount of storage space as well. That pull-out drawer ahead of the front passenger that we just mentioned doesn't compromise the size of the glove box, or at least it doesn't in the left-hand drive models anyway. Right hookers like this one suffer from the usual malady of older Peugeot Citroen designs, 
of a fuse box taking up half of the glove box capacity. Every other automotive manufacturing group manages to design a right-hand drive conversion without resorting to this. Which is annoying because apart from this slim draw and this very compactly shaped deep box between the seats, there aren't really many places to store things away from prying eyes. Still, there's the broad area at the base of the centre stack we mentioned earlier with a further ledge above that which on this top model accommodates a wireless charging mat. We like the fact that you get a choice of both USB-A and USB-C ports with which to connect your devices, though wireless connectivity would have been even better. And though an overhead sunglasses compartment has been omitted, there are ticket clips on the sun visors, coin trays in the door pools, and you get twin cup holders between the seats covered by a neat concertina ring top. And rear seat space, well, you might hope for an improvement there given the body length increase this C4X enjoys over its hatch counterpart. But that ignores the fact that this saloon model's wheelbase length of 2,670 millimetres is unchanged over the hatch. So things are much the same in the back, apart from the fact that headroom is slightly compromised by the sloping rear roof line. In compensation, Citroen claims best in class second row knee room 198 millimetres, and a more reclined, at 27 degrees, rear seat back. Plus, the exterior width of 1,800 millimetres means that three people can comfortably sit side by side across the rear bench, with a total of 1,380 millimetres of width at the shoulders and 1,440 millimetres at the elbows. If you don't need to take anyone in the middle and you've stretched to top spec trim, you'll be free to use this fold out center armrest, which incorporates a pen tray as well as the usual cup holders. Younger folk will be pleased to find that both USB A and C sockets are provided back here, and these small rear quarter lights add much needed illumination into this darkly trimmed space. Overhead coat hooks have been overlooked, and these headrests can dig uncomfortably into your shoulders until you raise them. But you get the usual seat back pockets and twin central vents, plus there are individual overhead reading lights and coin trays in the door pools. Well, we'll finish with a look at the boot, which turns out to be surprisingly large at 510 litres in size, much bigger than the 380 litres you get in the C4 hatch. There's a little room beneath the floor too, useful on this EC4X model for the storage of charging leads. And if you need more room, then the rear seat backrest folds 60-40. You'll have to stretch right up to the very top of the range to get a ski hatch fit. Expect pricing to be the same as that of the C4 hatch, which for the combustion models means a starting figure of around £22,000 for a PureTech 100 petrol manual model with base shine trim. If you want the PureTech 130 petrol unit or the 1.5 blue HDI diesel, you'll need to go further up the range. There are plusher Sense Plus, C-Series Edition and Shine Plus variants. Budget from just over £25,000 for a PureTech 130 E88 automatic, or from just under £29,000 for a blue HDI 130 E88 auto diesel version. For the EC4X, again expect hatch match pricing, which means a starting figure of around £32,000 for base sense trim. There are also plusher Shine and Shine Plus variants offered further up the range which take pricing to about £35,500. These figures are for the base 50 kilowatt hour battery version. You'll need slightly more for the faster 54 kilowatt hour variant with its longer range. To take on key compact similarly sized EV rivals in the same price bracket, all versions of this C4X need to be well equipped. And they are. Standard features across the lineup include 18 inch cross light alloy wheels, LED headlamps and front fog lights, rear parking sensors, and also headlamps and wipers. Inside, there's a 5.5 inch TFT instrument screen and a 10 inch infotainment screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto mirror screen tech, 
plus dual zone air conditioning and a neat slide out dashboard tray above the glove box. Upgrading yourself to mid-range spec gets you intelligent beam headlights, front parking sensors, adaptive cruise control, rear privacy glass, and extra silver and chrome exterior detailing. Inside, you gain a heated steering wheel, a ski hatch in the rear bench, a head-up display, a reversing camera, navigation and voice activation, plus smart pad support, a retractable tablet holder built directly into the dashboard which enables the front passenger to make the most of time spent on the move. You don't really need much more than that in this car, but if you really want everything Citroen can offer, then top Shine Plus spec gives you heated front seats, parts Alcantara upholstery, and the brand's Highway Driver Assist Package, a level two semi-autonomous drive system incorporating adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assist. On to options. Now, avoid base trim and you can add a large electric opening panoramic sunroof, a Citroen Hi-Fi system and a hype black ambience interior pack that includes grey stitched part Sienna leather upholstery and a driver's seat with power adjustment and a massage function. If the smart pad support feature has been fitted, you'll need to pay Citroen £100 extra for the cradle design to fit the kind of tablet or iPad you have and virtually all customers will need to pay more for paint colour because the only standard shade is solid polar white. Surprisingly, the option of a smartphone charging mat is only available with top Shine Plus trim. The Highway Driver Assist package we just mentioned is a £400 option with this mid-level trim model. As for safety, well, Citroen boasts of the fact that this car offers no fewer than 20 different driver assistance features, but inevitably, provision of these varies quite a lot depending on the model and trim level you choose. As you'd expect, all versions of this C4X get an autonomous braking system, but with base sense spec, it only comes as part of a limited standard safety pack, which can't work at night or detect cyclists. To be able to do that, it has to have video camera and radar functionality, which Citroen supplies as part of the Safety Pack Plus pack, that it fits above entry-level trim. It's £1,300 more with base spec. If needed, that extra outlay does at least also get you a speed limit information traffic sign picturing system. Across the range, all C4Xs get forward collision warning, which alerts you if you're getting too close to the vehicle in front. There's also lane keeping assist that'll alert you if you drift out of lane on the highway and subtly steer you back to where you ought to be. And there's driver attention warning, which will alert you if drowsiness is detected. More important still is the standard Citroen Connect Box emergency and assistance system, a package that'll automatically alert the emergency services with your exact location if the airbags go off. The two Shine Spec models also get active blind spot detection, which alerts you if you're about to dangerously pull out in front of another vehicle and will, if necessary, automatically brake the car to avoid a collision. These two top variants get high beam assist headlamps too. Passive safety kit fitted across the range includes in-crash braking, which in an impact will break the car to prevent it from flying off and hitting something else. There's also the usual twin front airbags, though no driver's knee bag, plus row one side thorax airbags and row one and two curtain airbags. Along with Isofix child seat fastenings, hill start assist and the usual electronic assistance for braking, traction and stability control. So, petrol or electric? Of course, to make a proper judgment, you're going to need to peruse the combustion model efficiency figures, which are very class competitive. The base PureTech 100 manual version manages up to 54.8 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 122 grams per kilometre of CO2. 
With plusher trim, the Volume PureTech 130EAT Auto C4 variant returns up to 50.2 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 130 grams per kilometre of CO2, or up to 54.9 mpg and up to 119 grams per kilometre in manual gearbox form. As for the blue HDI diesel version, well, you're looking at up to 60.1 mpg and up to 129 grams per kilometre. And electric? Well, the Department of Transport tells us that the average motorist in the UK covers 7,400 miles a year, which is the kind of mileage that would cost an EC4 owner somewhere between £200 and £300 in added electricity charges, powering up from a typical 7.4 kilowatt garage wall box on off-peak rates. The variance, depending on driving style and different electricity prices. We've assumed 11 pence per kilowatt hour. The same annual mileage in this PureTech petrol model would work out to somewhere between £750 and £820 and you'd have to factor in more expensive annual garage servicing too. The EC4X charges at up to 100 kilowatts and charging times are the same with either the 50 kilowatt hour or the 54 kilowatt hour battery. The EC4X is fitted with a 7.4 kilowatt onboard charger, which can rapid charge to 80% in around half an hour using a 100 kilowatt public fast charger. At home, the car will charge from empty in around 7.5 hours using a 7 kilowatt garage wall box. That could fall to just five hours if you have a three phase home electricity supply and have the car fitted with an optional 11 kilowatt onboard charger. You'd need 24 hours charging from a domestic socket. As usual with an electric car, to take advantage of lower cost off-peak electricity tariffs, you can manage charging times by using the touchscreen tablet in the passenger compartment or by using the provided My Citroen app. The charging port features a coloured indicator so the user can monitor the charging process, which can also be followed on the My Citroen app. Whatever your choice of variants, you'll probably want to keep garage costs in check by opting for the affordable three-year servicing plan that's available at point of purchase. Finally, there's the usual Citroen three-year or 60,000 mile warranty, and the EC4X has its own battery warranty, eight years or 100,000 miles for 70% of charge capacity. Citroen really wants this C4X to be seen as a coupe SUV like Renault's Arcana, which might be a bit of a stretch because it's not clean sheet design like that car, merely a C4 hatch with a rather stylish boot. Still, Still, because that C4 hatch model has a rather crossover vibe, the C4X confection kind of works. And the way the stretched rear has been configured means that you get more luggage space than any other compact saloon of this size we can think of. Fashion and practicality are attributes the C4X will need because mainstream brand sedans rarely sell well in our market. This one may not break that trend, but the right kind of customer might well like it very much indeed. It delivers the saloon body style Citroen needs in its lineup for Middle Eastern, African and Southern European markets. But there's much wider appeal here. Enough maybe to make you want to try this car.